Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to another Mortal Kombat 11 video. This is not going to be a tutorial. In this episode, I decided that I'm going to be making my first tier list for this game. Now, the reason this video, I know, I guess it's kind of coming out of nowhere. The reason is I was going to upload actually Sekiro, the final episode of Sekiro. However, currently I am like really struggling against the final boss. So I tried for hours today and it just wasn't happening. I didn't have anything else to upload, so I was like, you know what, let me go ahead and try my hand at an MK11 tier list. Tomorrow I'm going to be traveling for work, so we might as well, you know, leave off with a controversial video. So yeah, let's get into it. Now the thing about tier lists, first of all, don't take them as word. Tier lists are in some parts always going to be based on a person's opinions, however, with this game, the game has been out for a good while, we've had a couple of major tournaments. It's clear who the good characters are, it is extremely clear. And it is also clear who the not so good characters are. I mean, there's some debate between like these tiers, the A to B tiers. However, the other ones, yeah, it's pretty much set in stone. The other thing is, this game, for all its faults, is incredibly balanced. So this is one of the most balanced fighting games out there. Sure, there are incredibly problematic characters. There are a couple of problematic moves on both sides, you know, under and overpowered. However, any character can win against any character on a casual level. In a high level tournament, it can be debated. Uh, however, on a casual, just playing ranked or playing uh, casual matches online, it really doesn't matter who you pick and that's why people always say you know do not base everything off of tier lists really I would say play the characters you want to play however there will be a difference against uh, Gears compared to like Shao Kahn so let's get into this as you can see the tiers go from S to B minus I don't think there are any characters who fall below B minus that just means they're a little bit worse than other characters S tier these characters they can get away with mistakes. You can make a couple of mistakes, you don't have to think as hard about what you're gonna be doing, whereas the B minus is, uh, you have to like really be on point. The other thing of course is that sometimes you will have characters in the S and A tiers who do the exact same thing as a B minus tier character does, so like the same gameplay niche, but they do it way better. So that's why I would say B minus is probably kind of enthusiast characters, uh, like really, if you like these characters who are on the lower tiers, uh, you're going to be playing them anyways, regardless of how they're placed. Anyways, let's not beat around the bush, don't want to waste too much time. Uh, I'm not going to like over describe each character, I'll just give a couple of sentences on why I think they're in the tier that they're in. So the first character we are going to be starting off with is Mr. Gears. Without a doubt, Gears is the best character in the game right now. I can I can say this. Uh, he is for sure the most dominant. I would say the other characters in each tier, uh, it doesn't really matter how you place them, but Gears is clearly at the top. He controls the space in on the screen. I would say as well as Scorpion. You are so scared of that sand trap all the time. You're afraid to move. You're afraid to jump. You're afraid to press buttons because anytime he can just bam, do the sand trap crushing blow, ton of damage. He has some of the best jump attacks in the game with the body splash. He has extremely good mids. He has high damage. He can use two bars for even more damage. Uh, some of the best wake ups in the game, both up three, which covers basically the whole area around him and up two, which travels like two thirds of the screen. Gears, without a shadow of a doubt, especially in his infinite warden variation, is the best character in the game. He also has overheads and lows, six frame down one, what else do I need to say? Gears is clearly the most dominant character. Next up in the S tier we have Sonya Blade. Weirdly, Sonya Blade has been good in every MK game, I think since MK9. She's just insane, overhead and low machine. She, one of the things she lacks is a good mid, however she has forward advancing overhead and low strings the overhead leading into massive damage, she has a surprisingly great projectile, like a way better projectile than a character that is really focused on being up close and brawly should have. 
excellent crushing blows. Oh yeah, and that's one of the things I forgot to mention about Gears as well. Gears has some of the best crushing blows in the game. Some of the easiest requirements for sure for extremely high damage. Sonya, she has a couple of good ones, but really where she shines is just overhead and low mix-ups, especially in the corner, leading into massive chunks of damage. All right, next character in the S category, gotta be Aaron Black. Now, Aaron Black, this is one of those characters that people have been kind of doubting lately. I think he is still S tier. He is an absolute potato. First of all, he has half screen overhead and low mix-ups, even though one of those options is extremely unsafe. He has some of the best mashy strings in the game. Like they have very high priority, good startup. Uh, he can just like go and mash the, that back 2-2-2. Two, two, two. I think he has that other mashy string. Anytime he can cancel into the slide, into the acid, some of the best anti-zoning tools in the game. And it, this character is weird because he doesn't have too many tools. I mean, he, he only has a few strings, but those strings and those special moves are so good that he just like, again, really simple to play. And he just blows every other, a lot of other, other characters out the water. Not to mention that Aaron Black, without a doubt, has the best fatal blow in the game. That is without a question. Armored, 10 frames, I think, on startup higher damage, higher average damage than the most uh, fatal blows. Anytime you have fatal blow with Aaron Black, bam, you just hit that L2, R2. Anytime your opponent tries to do anything and just take a step forward, you know, and then they're gonna be taking massive damage. Aaron Black, just insane. Also one of the best corner characters. Yeah, just really, really solid S tier all around. And finally, the last character in S tier, this might be the controversial one, I'm gonna put Jackie Briggs there. I think Jackie Briggs, I've always thought that she was good, but you know, when Sonic Fox picked her up, uh, it kind of became really obvious that, yeah, this is an excellent character. Uh, other people play her at a really high level as well. And every time someone picks her up, I'm like, damn, this character is insane. So whereas Sonya kind of focuses on overheads and lows, Jackie focuses on mids, but they basically both have the same gameplay style. You know, just like being up close, really brawly, and then any touch leads into massive damage. So talking about Jackie, she has, without a doubt, one of the best strings in the game with that forward three, four, two, or is it? No, it's forward three, one, four. Yeah, she can cancel it with that duck, which is actually a lot more threatening than you'd think. People always say that this character is not so good because, oh, you can just like react to the throw or do something. Well, when you think about how threatening her mids are, uh, it's really not that easy because you're constantly scared of her just pressing that extra button, continuing the string, and then leading into damage. Incredible combo damage, uh, great corner carry, very difficult to zone her out because of the dash punch, and she also has that back 2 2 string. Again, very difficult to uh, zone her out. Incredible corner damage also has great crushing blows. So all around, she is like way above the competition. Like some people cannot even compete with her mids. I mean, when you think about the fact that some characters on this roster, <clears throat> and where is he? <clears throat> Don't even have proper mids. A character that has mids that are this good is absolutely insane. One of the best pressures in the game as well. She, it's really hard to get her off of you, Jackie. All right, so that is about gonna cover the S tier. Let's go into A tier. A tier, we are going to start off with Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero, just mix up machine. I would say that Sub-Zero is really like a potato character. Two special moves, only a couple of combo strings, but he still makes it work because that reset is th so threatening in the Dead of Winter variation. Just constant overhead, low mix ups. He has really good damage. That's one thing that people forget. Again, very difficult to zone him out, can trade with the ice ball, can close distance from anywhere on the screen. And yeah, he just deals excellent damage on top of that with the resets and without the resets. If you just go with combos, this character would be a little bit lower, but with the resets and the combo damage, he's high up there. Up in the A category, we also have Scorpion. Scorpion controls the screen better than most characters, you know, on 
par with Gears, I would say. Where Scorpion struggles a bit more is that he doesn't have nearly as good strings as Gears does. Only thing holding this character back from being here is that he's incredibly unsafe. People thought he was S tier, but... Well, I never thought, but a lot of people did think that he was S tier. I always thought that he was too unsafe for a character to be S tier. But still, one of the best throw games, for sure the best teleports. Yeah, Scorpion, really solid all around. Next up in this category, we are going to have Cassie Cage. So Cassie Cage, I think, is another debatable one, but I think she's a lot better than people give her credit for. Uh, one of the things is that, again, a really solid mid. She has a standing reset uh, with the Knot Punch. And one of the things that kind of became obvious as the lifespan of this game is going on is that wake-ups are incredibly threatening. And any character that can force the opponent to stop a wake-up or not have that wake-up option available is going to be very strong. And Cassie just does that. She also has a really good projectile, good corner damage. Yeah, just all around extremely solid character. Also in the A category, we are going to have Cabal. Cabal is just safe on everything. That's the thing about him. Uh, he deals good damage. He doesn't really have mix-ups, but every single goddamn thing this character does is safe. And that is kind of ridiculous. Uh, it's literally impossible to punish him because nothing he does ever leaves him open to counterattacks. He also has good reach. That's also worth mentioning. And I would say probably the second best fatal blow in the game after Aaron Black's. Also in this category, we have Scarlet. Uh, Scarlet, really good zoner, a way better zoner than people give her credit for. Meterless combo damage, which is also a bonus. And yeah, just this a solid zoner, probably the best zoner in the game, like zoning focus character for sure. So I think people definitely underrate her. She has great normals as well, uh, good crushing blows, good damage. She's got it all. Yeah, for sure the best zoner in the game, maybe with the exception of one other character who is in this tier, and that character is Jade. Jade, again, zony, but a little bit more simple than Scarlet, maybe not as much combo damage, but she has some of the best screen control in the game, especially with the air projectile. I think it becomes kind of apparent that any character with an air projectile like that is going to be very solid. And Jade has some of the best ones. She is also impossible to counter zone. Like any zoner, she just destroys. She just absolutely destroys. And again, she's better frame data than people give her credit for. And she can go toe to toe up close, but you know, she's just really, really annoying to deal with from afar. All right, A minus category, these characters are still incredibly solid, a little bit less so than these characters. These characters have the A minus ca category has some more obvious weaknesses, but still you cannot go wrong with picking a character from this tier either. So first character we have here is Baraka. I think Baraka is debatable. He could go into either category. I had kind of trouble placing him. The only reason is I feel like this tier is already kind of full. But Baraka, he, I would say he's somewhere in between. He's one of the most potato characters in the game. Deals excellent damage. The only thing where he struggles is really opening people up. He has overheads, but his overhead is just this big leap, which is reactable. And really, he only has lows. So he has trouble opening people up. But when he does open people up, it hurts. Some of the best combo damage in the game for how easy his combos are to execute. And he also has a really good second variation, the command throw one. That's a really underrated variation. And I think it has a lot of benefits as well. Okay, A- minus also contains Noob Saibot. Noob Saibot, uh, huge damage, very good zoning, very good. Just like you would think this would be a very solid character. Probably he's a fan favorite online because he does really well online because of the little bit of delay. But in tournament, people have kind of figured out that Noob struggles with the fact that he doesn't really have any solid mids. And most of his big combo starters are mid. I mean, are high. So you can just kind of duck under and disrespect a lot of stuff he does. But still, again, when he touches you, uh, it hurts. And 10% projectile, who can say no to that? That's one of the highest dealing projectiles in the game. 
Next up, A minus tier is going to contain Jax. Now Jax is a little bit of a weird one, very simple to play, but his other variation I think has more interesting stuff, a little bit more mix-ups and, you know, because he has the beatdown variation, hunker down, but definitely it is other variation shines as well. Just great all-around damage, very simple gameplay. You don't have to, like, you know, be very careful with him. A lot of safe stuff. And when he gets going with those crushing blows, uh, he can, like, take a round in, like, 20 seconds. It's kind of insane. Where Jax really struggles is opening people up. He doesn't really have a threatening low. And the command throw, and the command throw is not enough of, th of a threat to be actually, like, a big, you know, deterrent. Yeah, just really... You can just kind of stand block against him and react to the throw and then there's not going to be much he can do. Also in this tier is Liu Kang. I think Liu Kang, people have figured out that he has no way to open you up, just kind of like Jax. Very solid mids, very safe on a lot of stuff, but yeah, any character, he just kind of struggles with opening people up. Uh, his like mix-ups with the nunchucks are very reactable. He also doesn't have a lot of safe options. In terms of not his strings, but in terms of special moves. So, yeah, good character. Very good kind of like pressure-based character. But I think people early on thought he was way better. But his gameplay was kind of figured out by this point. Next up, Johnny Cage. I think Johnny Cage is actually underrated, I would say. People, people think he's shitty. And the main reason people think he's shitty, and it is his biggest weakness, is that he only really has highs. He really struggles with not having mids. However, Johnny Cage has probably the best walk speed in the game. So a lot of times he can just kind of like walk in and out of range and use those great like forward advancing high moves that he has. Even though they're high, they cover great frames, they have great range. And yeah, it just leads into massive damage. Also a character with a restand. And again, any character with a restand is going to be very solid. He also has some of the most annoying like low pokes and down ones in the game. And finally, the last character in the A- tier is going to be Kitana. Now Kitana, good zoning, and she actually has some fairly solid mids. Where she struggles with, again, is opening people up. But I think her fans are threatening enough and the little kind of bot mid attack that she does can be threatening enough that she's actually dangerous, uh, very annoying to fight as well. Probably not a character that's going to see a lot of good results, but this pressure-based, zoning-based style I think fits Kitana. It's kind of what she did in MKX as well, except she had massive combo damage there. She has less combo damage here, but the core gameplay idea of her is still the same. Next up, B tier. This is where we get into the tier where characters start showing more significant weaknesses, uh, more kind of, I would say, damaging weaknesses than the characters in these tiers. But these are still viable characters. Uh, they have stuff going for them. And in this tier, starting off, we have Cetrion. Cetrion is an interesting one. She's a good zoner. The problem is she cannot really compete with the best zoners in the game. Uh, Scarlet and Jade absolutely destroy her in the zoning department. So she's one of those characters, probably the first one on this list, where you're like, well, if you like zoning, why don't you just pick this character or this character? She has nothing, like she offers no advantage over these other two characters. That's one of the reasons she's cool and all that, and she actually has uh, combos, even though they deal very low damage, but she basically has very few ways of making herself safe. She has to spend meter all the time, and yeah, this is just, you never have meter with this character, because you're, if you want to play her correctly, you'll be teleporting a lot, using your meter to keep yourself safe, so defensively, she is not the best. She also has very low combo damage, and she does have kind of shitty wake-ups, I would say. Next up, we have Frost. Uh, Frost kind of struggles, I think the biggest issue with Frost is inconsistency. A lot of her combos are kind of they feel inconsistent, you know, the little ice blast she does to combo start, it doesn't really it doesn't really connect, even though sometimes I feel like it should. Frost to me also seems like a little bit of a confused character. Is it like, is she supposed to be zoning? Is she supposed to be like relying on really good mids? Is she supposed to be a mix-up character? She's kind of all over the place with uh, what she does, which means she doesn't really excel in any area. And her variation specific moves 
uh, tend to be kind of very weak. She has the head bomb one, which is uh, the worst one. And the other one, the grenade she does or she has doesn't really offer anything. So yeah, I would say kind of just a confused character, but definitely has stuff. So she can make she can be made great. Raiden. Raiden kind of falls into the same category as Cetrion. It's like if you're gonna be zoning, you might as well play one of these characters. Raiden is also supposed to have like these big ranged buttons, but Scarlet also has those. Uh Raiden, he has a teleport, but yeah he's just he's just weird uh cannot really open people up can be disrespected super hard if you know how to counter his little like thunder wave thing he does there is a very easy counter to it that the last hit is high and if your opponent knows that you are gonna be having like basically no opportunities to say to stay safe so yeah you gotta be very careful with raiden he's extremely unsafe and i think that's his biggest weakness kung lao Kung Lao is just the worst version of Liu Kang, I would say. He is going to be focused on the same kind of very solid mid playstyle using his very strong mids, but he has way worse mids than Liu Kang. Uh, also a character that struggles with being very unsafe. His dive kick is great. Like The dive kick is very strong, even though it is unsafe. It can be used to disrespect a lot of stuff, but people just kind of tend to dock block against him, and, and there's really not much he can do against you. You, yeah, you'll be struggling to open up people with Kung Lao, but when he does, he deals a lot of good damage. Finally, we are going to have Collector. Well, not finally, because there's one more character here. Collector, same category. Like A lot of these characters have the same problems. Collector, again, struggles with not being able to open people up. He has a command throw, which doesn't deal a lot of damage. And his combos, you can mainly uh, block low against him. He also has a lot of gimmicks with the chain, which can be good, but once people figure it out, uh, it's very easy to counter. Again, he only really has lows. Uh, he doesn't really have uh, any good, solid combo starting mids. And combined with the fact that he does very low damage, uh, you know, he just kind of struggles. Also add to the fact that some of his combos are inconsistent. If your spacing is off just by a little bit, uh, his Bola, even the enhanced version, can miss, which doesn't help him, you know. And again, this character does very low damage. Last up, we have Kano. Kano, again, uh, he does actually good damage. That's not his main issue. He doesn't have mids. That's issue number one. And issue number two is that his command threat, his command grab is not threatening enough to compensate for the fact that he doesn't have mids. And he also probably has the worst second variation in the entire game. God damn, that variation is bad with the chemical stuff and the Molotov cocktails. What were they thinking? Did I actually manage to get even amounts of characters? I think I did. That's kind of crazy. Well, that shows that this character tier is balanced. I mean, most games' character tiers should look something like this. I mean, if like 90% of the cast is in S tier, you know, like what's even the point? But yeah, so yeah, fairly balanced game, as you can see. Most characters fall into this middle range with some of them excelling a little bit and some of them not so much. But now we finally arrive to the B-minus category. These are, again, really like enthusiast characters. People will do well with them. Online and offline, you'll have... Believe me, someday there will come along some crazy Shao Kahn. And online, you will 100% get destroyed by, you know, Kotal Khans or Devoras or something. But really, in like high-level tournament play, these characters just have way too many weaknesses that, you know, they just can't excel. Like, they, they're they going to have a very hard time to get their game plan going. That's kind of a shame. However, because they're only in B-, minus, I will say these characters are not far away from being able to be made good. It's only a patch and a couple of adjustments away from, like, you know, Dovora being here or Kotal or Shao Kahn being there. But again, first of all, we have to put poor Devora there. Where she just really struggles, all her moves are incredibly slow, like painfully slow. Her mids, she doesn't have really good other moves to compensate for, you know, slow mids and only having highs. And she has some of the lowest combo damage in the game. She has good setups. Like, if you can get your setups going, which, like, you know, players like Sonic Fox can really get those setups going... She can be good, but the amount of work required to even do minimal combo damage with her 
just not worth it, man. And again, she can be disrespected super hard because every move of hers is so incredibly too slow. She's probably the best down two or one of the best down twos in the game for that. But yeah, she doesn't have too much going for her. Kotokan. Kotokan, he struggles with two things. One of them, he has way too many highs. Um, again, some characters also have a lot of highs like Johnny Cage, but Johnny Cage compensates for it. Kotokan doesn't really. He has combos which do not deal fantastic damage. He does have the command grab, but the only problem is that the command grab is nearly impossible to space people with because he's always throwing them to the other side. So he has good corner carry, but he always ends with switching sides with the opponent. So it's very difficult to get people into the corner. He also has no way to open people up. I mean, sure, okay, the command grab. But again, the problem is command grabs don't deal enough damage unless they have a crushing blow like Jax's uh, to be actually threatening. And Kotal Khan's doesn't have a crushing blow. So yeah, this character, he struggles hard and again, can be disrespected super, super hard. Really, I would say that the one thing that would make this character, if I had to give like patch notes and patch suggestions, just make it so that his command throw, if you meter burn it, you can choose which side you land your opponent lands on. That's all we need. That's all we need. And a couple of tweaks to his mids. And this will be a character like up here. And again, these characters don't need much, but they need something. Finally, we arrive to the other Khan. It's kind of strange that both Khans are in this category. But Shao Khan kind of struggles in the same way as Kotal does. Everything he does is a high. And he's better than Kotal in the fact that I think he has better projectiles and better screen control. But yeah, Shao Kahn, very, very easy to disrespect. Every move he does because he uses the hammer is like absolute death on whiff. Like if your opponent gets a good jump, jumps over you when you're doing like a 4-2, yeah, you're going to have a bad time. And yeah, with just how the game is, uh, wake-ups being so good, down-twos being so good, people playing like really mashy, you know, and all that. A character without a good mid really struggles. People have figured out stuff with him and he does good damage, but yeah, this is just a really weak character. Finally, Shang Tsung, we don't know where Shang Tsung is going to be. Obviously, we'll find out in a couple of weeks and that's really why I wanted to make this tier list. I'm like, Shang Tsung is coming. I'm sure there will be some balanced tweaks. So who knows what the tier list will look like after, but this is what I think looks like. it looks like now. So good balanced game every character is viable it's just these characters struggle a bit more than these so hope you guys enjoyed this little tier list video if you did make sure to like comment subscribe do all that thanks for watching this mortal kombat 11 discussion video let me know what you think of this tier list and i'll see all of you next time goodbye